Hi everybody. Well, today I've been to the UK Knife Show, which was uh, a nice event. Loads of people there sharing different blades of all different manufacturers and different products. So that was good fun, but it inspired me to uh, basically come home with a nice new bit of uh, 1095 that I bought and uh, thought, sod it, might as well try making something. So uh, I've drawn up on here a couple of Kiridashi blades, which I thought I'd let you guys uh, watch me make them. We'll see how they're going to turn out in the end. Unfortunately, I don't have a metal cutting bandsaw or an angle grinder available to me today, so I'm going to do this the old fashioned way. So I decided I need a uh, hacksaw blade that's got a few more teeth left on it. So we'll switch this out and hopefully things will go a little bit quicker. Okay, so finally managed to uh, cut these two pieces apart. This is four mil stick, four mil thick 1095, which uh, took a fair bit of elbow grease. So I'm going to build both of these for you as a pair. So obviously they're two different knives, but I'm basically going to build them at the same time as each other. Um, so we'll kind of work between both of them through the profile grinding, the bevel grinding, the heat treat, putting the handles on, etc. Um, so hopefully at the end we'll end up with a, a couple of nice little kiridashis. Alright, let's get this thing fired up. Okay, well there we have it, a little while later, two nice profiles roughly cut out, obviously you've still got all the edges and everything to tidy up, but it's not exactly that exciting to watch, so I plan on doing that, and then um, I'm going to drill some 
holes through here and on here for some dowel pins that we'll use to firstly attach it to the jig that I'm going to use for uh, doing the bevels and then secondly so that we can attach the scales with them later on. Okay, so I've drilled my holes through the tang here, um, and they're basically what I've used to mount it to my fairly basic jig. Um, I've got plans to make a much better jig in the future, but my CNC mill is currently a bit thick, so this is going to have to do for now. Basically, it's a large piece of teak, I think it is, um, and effectively what I've done is I've tapped a couple of uh, bolts through the bottom there, so I can adjust my elevation up and down. Um, on the front here I basically just put a little bit of electrical tape which acts as a very basic uh, lubricant which you know obviously obviously a bit of hardened steel or a nice bit of acetal or something like that would probably work a lot better with less friction but like I say this is uh, kind of one of those things that's not terribly important and this works for now. So my cutting plan is because I'm basically putting a nice flat straight razor edge on this blade um, got a nice accurate precision level here where my jig when it's lined up going the correct way across it obviously everything lines up nice and square I don't know if you can see that and then basically what I've done is effectively screwed a couple of wood screws straight through the hole there um, to basically level it up so when it sits on there everything's sitting nice and square with each other so hopefully as I'm grinding here then all my grind lines are gonna just make life nice and easy and very accurate my plan is to put just a single sided bevel on here um, so we've got four mil thick material I've set my angle on here to where I expect um, I should be able to hopefully grind down to a line about 12 mil down the edge of the blade. So I'm just going to color that in with a sharpie. Set my calipers here to 12 mil, and uh, just going to mark in a, a very rough line, which will give me a bit of a go no go gauge to see how well my angle is working out by the time I get to the the far edge of here. And again, obviously I'll leave uh, you know half a mil or so on there for heat treat and then take the rest off once it's hard um, I'm running a bit low on belts currently I need to order some more so with this one I'm just using a 60 grit zirconium which uh, should make light work of this although it may limit the life of the belt Okay, so I've finished grinding the uh, the bevel on there. As you can see, left a tiny bit of meat on the edge of the blade. And that's taken that down to about a 180 grit belt, which should be absolutely fine. Because again, once I've heat treated it, then uh, I'm going to need to go on there with something to get all the scale off. so there we go that's basically finished so far as the the roughing goes uh, it's basically just going to be a case of heat treating it next and then uh, once that's done clean up all these surfaces make them look real pretty before we then uh, look at gluing the handles on
Okay, so before I do the heat treat, I'm just uh, doing a bit of basic surface finishing on here. So I don't know if you can see there's uh, some odd scratches going on in the centre of the blade here. So basically my method is I've got an extremely strong neodymium magnet with a screw through the middle. So basically a screw indexes into one of the holes which saves this whole blade from dropping down on me. Um, and basically I'm going to run the linear shear and very gingerly basically offer it up onto there and just allow that to clean up these surfaces. That's looking pretty good. Just uh, go over there once more with a slightly finer grip, and then that'll be ready for heat treat. Okay, so that's how we are after that last bit of final finishing. Um, I've taken it down to about a 320 grip on pretty much every surface, so that should be plenty. Then basically once I do the heat treat and it gets covered in scale and ruined, then I'll do it all again to hopefully bring it back to this state before we then put the handles on. Okay, so you can see on here I've drawn out roughly where my handle shape is going to go. So a nice little sweeping curve on the back here. Nice sharp angle on the front. Um, I've got a couple of bits of desert camo Kiranite left over from another project which are just about the perfect size so my plan on here is basically going to uh, drill through one of these with the same five and a half mil diameter bit that I used to create the hole in the metalwork um, then I'm once that's drilled I'm going to put a spare one of those five and a half mil drill bits through the hole to basically pin everything together whilst I then drill the remaining two holes and then I can basically 
use those as dowel pins to hold the uh, kirinite to the knife blade whilst I then go around and profile the rest of it and then um, basically the same again once the handle has been hardened and then that's about it really Okay, so that's all the holes drilled there, it's looking good. Basically now I'm just going to uh, use a sharpie, draw a line around there, then I'm going to carefully see if I can trim as close to that as possible, so I might be able to use this off cut here for another smaller, similar size knife in the future. Okay, so there we have it, pretty much the rough uh, shape of the handle. All I really need to do is just refine some of these uh, lines, basically at this back end here. And I think I'll put a nice 45 degree chamfer or something similar along this edge at the front. Um, and then once those ends are done, we'll basically uh, be gluing the handle with a nice strong epoxy to the blade and then we'll finish up the uh, the overlap on the back and on the underside here once that glue's gone off okay so I'm about to drill the holes for this knife um, which I've painstakingly gone through uh, marked black areas where I'm going to put my four different holes and then I'll basically use my micrometer here to a set the distance for the center of each hole in each position down the knife here to make sure they're a nice equal pitch and then because um, this is a slightly tapered tang all the way along um, I basically measured the cross section at each one of these points divided by two and gone and put a tiny little scratch in the center of each part so hopefully by the time I drill these out then 
everything will be set nice and centered and it'll look like a high quality uh, product at the end of it so my idea is I'm going to basically go through center punch each one of those little markings and then from there on in we'll drill them out to uh, about a five and a half mil diameter where we basically got some nice uh, carbon fiber tube that I'm going to use as dowel pins This is my setup for the smaller of the two blades, so pretty much the same as the other one. And again, hopefully we'll end up with the same uh, angle on the bevel, because effectively it's the same uh, diameter piece of metal to start with. That's up to 180 grit. Do you want to some heat treats? Okay, so I've been heating up a piece of rebar. You can see it's glowing red down there. We're going to use this to heat up the quenchant oil. Okay, just a few seconds later, just run to find a file, and uh, sure enough, give that a pretty darn good filing, and absolutely nothing is really coming off. That's with a pretty darn sharp file as well. Okay, <clears throat> while everything's still hot from doing the first one, we'll uh, do the second one as well. Okay, so the heat treat is finally done. 
And again, you can see there's all kinds of nastiness about this blade now that it's covered in uh, baked on oil and uh, all that other tarnish nastiness. So just put a 180 grit belt on there and uh, we're going to give it a bit of a grinding just to clean off all that surface residue. Okay, so I'm starting to uh, look at finishing off the Kirinite handles here. What I've done is I've smoothed off the, uh, the back curve. Just going to sit at the back of the knife like that. Now what I want to do before I glue these on is put a 45 degree chamfer on these edges. So what I've done is I've set up a, uh, a router bit coming through my tabletop here. So that's got a, a nice 45 degree chamfer on it and it's got a ball bearing on the top which hopefully I've set it just shallow enough so that it will leave about a millimetre or so of thickness up against the edge of the blade and then what I'll do is basically turn these upside down and do exactly the same on the other side it'll leave enough uh, of a flat edge to run along the bearing in order to do the second side. Um, never tried this on Kirinite before I'm going to go full depth in one pass and see what happens. So let's give it a go. As you can see that's come out pretty nicely. Um, I say I haven't tried this on Kirinite before but I have done similar things on HDPE when making slingshots and things like that so I was fairly sure it was going to work out well. Now we'll just do the same on the other side.
So there we have it, both ends of that, nice 45 degree chamfer, so that's pretty much done. I'll do exactly the same on the front ends now, and um, then we're ready for gluing the handles in place. Okay, so I'm just getting to glue everything up here. Um, I've got some slow cure epoxy. I've got a little plastic tray to mix it in. So I'm just going to whip some of that together. And then other than that, I've got some acetone on a piece of kitchen towel. I'm going to clean up all the surfaces, all the holes, all the pins. And then my plan is I'm basically going to glue every side of every surface, stick it all together, and then I'm going to bind it nice and tight with a large elastic band. Effectively, as this design is so small, um, it's going to be difficult to get a spring clamp or a G clamp or anything on there in between the pins because they're quite tight together. Okay, so after all that, I uh, got it all wrapped up. I cleaned all the excess glue off from around the uh, points where the curanite meets the metal. Um, so again, even those bits as clean as possible is nice. And I've got just enough room to get a little clamp right on the front and right on the back to ensure there's absolutely no gaps, even at the extremities of the, uh, the curanite. So we'll leave that overnight and um, see tomorrow if we can grind it down into a nice shaped handle. Okay, so it's the next day now and um, basically we'll unwrap this thing and see how the glue has set. But I kept the tray that I used to mix up the glue last night. And again, you can see that has gone off absolutely rock solid. It's even difficult to pull it out the tray. The Allen key is completely stuck in there. So, I'm pretty sure we would have got a fantastic bond. Let's have a look. Just trim off the old elastic bands. A little bit of a buzz on the grinder and it gets shaping that handle. Okay, so since I uh, cleaned up the blade here, um, we've got a pretty good edge and obviously a very sharp tip. So, in order to make sure I don't kill myself whilst I'm grinding this handle, I'm basically going to wrap the uh, handle with a, a bit of cardboard and a bit of tape just to. Uh, make it slightly less lethal
Okay, so now I've got a rough profile established. All the edges are cleaned up with blue. Basically going to switch to a finer 180 grit belt to start putting some contours on here. Okay, I'm now going to basically just use some hand sandpaper to uh, round off some of these corners. Okay, and then uh, the final bit here is a lot and a lot of hand sanding. So all the edges are coming up looking pretty darn nice. But this is only a 120 grit so far. So I plan on basically going through and polishing the, the metal, well, both sides, but also the kyrenite as well. Um, I'm going to do this up to probably about a six or eight hundred grit and then uh, put it on the buffing wheel to bring it up to a nice high shine on the uh, on the kyrenite only. The metal is probably going to stay with a, a brush kind of finish. Okay, so we're pretty much done now. So the sanding has uh, been done up to about 800 grit. And then I've given it a quick wipe over with a little bit of acetone, which gives you an idea of what it's going to look like. But right now it's kind of a, a satin finish, so you could leave it just as it is there. But for this one, I'm going to give it a quick go on the buffing wheel just to uh, make things a little bit shinier. Okay, as you can see there, that's really bringing out some of the sparkle in that Kyrenite. Which again, the lighting in here is terrible, so it'd be a bit hard to see. But that a little bit more of that and then we'll be done okay I'm now going to put the uh, cutting devil on here
Okay, so there we have it, the finished article. Get it in focus there. I've given it a little bit of a sharpen, giving it a quick strop. Again, the most important thing. I need to work on my cutting skills, but there we go. Okay, so we've got this blade here after heat treat, and um, what we're going to do is just run it on this belt very quickly on all surfaces just to take the scale off. Okay, so I've cleaned up all the uh, main surfaces on here, just on the linisher, and um, I'm basically going to sweat out a handle for it next. So I happen to have this really lovely piece of engineered IKEA chopping board, which is uh, bamboo, and I think that's pretty perfect to go with this style of knife. So what I'm going to do is, with the grain of the bamboo running this way, I want it to run down the knife handle in the same way. Um, it's quite thick stuff, as you can see, but again, I haven't got a plane or anything handy to really easily chop that down. So what I'm going to do is slice this into a nice long section. I'm going to use one half on each side of this handle. Okay, so the holes are all drilled through the wood now. Again, they go all the way through. Basically using these drill bits to make sure that everything stays absolutely rigid whilst I basically just machine off the profile edges along here. Once the edges are done, then you see the dotted line around this end and the dotted line around this end. I'm basically going to, uh, again, grind the wood by itself uh, just to get the nice profiles finished on the front and back ends before I then glue the handles onto the blade. Okay, so now we've got the thickness all set. Basically, going to uh, machine this down to put a nice chamfer on the front end here and put a nice radius on the back. Okay, so I'm going to uh, use the router to basically put a nice 45 degree chamfer pretty much all the way around each one of these. 
and then once that's done I'm just going to thin them down on the sander Okay, so for this final shaping, I've actually put on some neoprene gloves um, purely to help the wood from not getting too discoloured with the dirt off my hands. So I've swapped down to a 180 grit belt here. Gonna give it a bit of a cleaning with a belt cleaning block beforehand. Again, just so I'm not putting dirt particles into the wood. So as I'm working on it, it'll stay nice and fresh. decided I'm going to put an etch on this blade. I'm um, just going to do the whole thing in one go. I've got some ferric chloride here which uh, should take care of that for me. So I've basically gone and cleaned this thoroughly, um, rinsed it thoroughly as well. Um, again hung it on a nice piece of wire so I haven't had to touch it with my hands since it's been cleaned. And, and I'm basically going to dip it into here going to make sure that the entire thing is underneath the, uh, the level of the acid, which it is. And then I'm basically going to give it five minutes or so, take it out periodically, have a look at it, see just how deep that etch has gone. And um, once it's got a nice grey patina, then we'll take it out and glue the handles to it. So let's have a look after a few seconds. It's already turned. So that's looking pretty good. It's done a 
pronounced change where the um, heat treat line is, which was interesting. In five minutes may have been a little bit too much because that is starting to look pretty darn etched after just a few seconds. Perhaps another minute or so and uh, we'll see how we go. Hopefully it doesn't dissolve the entire blade. Just kidding. <laughs> Okay, so that's probably been about three minutes or so now, and I think that's probably about as dark as it's going to get. So I've got some water here, which I'm basically just going to dump that in, so that will hopefully neutralize the majority of what's on there and just dilute the acid, put the lid back on there. Having a look at this here, um, let's get the camera in focus. You'll be able to see that there is a distinct line across here. Now, with this 1095, it did say that there's chances of producing Hamon lines. Whether that is related to that, as in this part of the blade is where it's hardened and this half hasn't, and that's why it's uh, basically got that color change in it who knows I'm sure someone out there can tell me but I think that's uh, adds a nice bit of character in its own way okay so I've just done a quick assembly here no glue yet but just checking to make sure the fit and finish of all these surfaces lines up perfectly because um, again once these are glued on I'm going to have to clean away all the excess glue because get, I can't re-grind this edge uh, without ruining the patina from the acid etch. So what I'm going to do is just trim these pins down as short as they possibly can be um, whilst just leaving a tiny amount exposed that I can then grind to the correct angle um, as a final pass. I'll just take one off each side once it's been glued. Okay, so we've got all the bits here ready for our glue up. So what I'm going to do, I've got acetone here, I'm going to clean all these parts thoroughly, and then um, that'll be time for gluing up. Okay, so now that is glued together, my plan is I'm basically going to try and acetone off the majority of the excess and then we'll give it a clamp and then again any more that comes out from the clamping, I'll monitor it for uh, a good half an hour or so and then basically just keep acetoning and acetoning each little bit that squidges out.
Okay, so there's that all clamped up. Um, you hold enough pressure on there for the glue to go off. Again, I don't know whether you can see on the edges there, there is just a tiniest amount of glue seeping out. Try and get that thing in focus. Just catch it in the light there. So I'm going to keep popping back every now and then just to keep tidying up those glue lines. So hopefully within the next 15, 20 minutes or so, it would have squidged out as much as it's going to. Right, so I've just unclamped this after it's uh, finished gluing. Linish the edges here to flatten off the, uh, the pegs going through. And uh, now I'm just going to rub a little bit of this Danish oil into it in order to uh, darken the wood a bit and also protect it. So basically I'll give that a few more coats once this one's dried and uh, that's us done. We basically just put an edge on the blade and then we can cut some stuff. Okay so we're just going to put an edge on the blade now. Currently it is just completely uh, blunt. It's about, I don't know, maybe a point one of a mil or so square on this edge. So we'll put on a, a 380 grit belt. Um, gonna run it backwards very slowly and just use the edge of my linisher here to uh, put a bevel on it. 